You're watching the NWR Resources Conference. It is November 2020. On the line, we have Russell Moran from Metals Tech. Metals Tech is targeting high-grade gold at the historic Sturek Gold Mine in Slovakia. Sturek has historically produced more than 1.5 million ounces of gold and 6.7 million ounces of silver, worth more than $2 billion US dollars in precious metals value. Metals Tech has defined a JORC compliant mineral resource of more than 1 million ounces of gold and 7.94 million ounces of silver. Metals Tech is continuing to grow the mineralized area at Sturek with physical gold identified in core from holes drilled earlier this month. We have Russell joining us today, who is the Metals Tech, Metals Tech Chairman. Russell Moran has a background in strategic business development in the mining, oil and gas, technology and health sectors. He also has significant experience in mineral resource development. He is a proven natural resources and tech investor with a track record in building public companies as well as m &A. Over to you, Russell. Thanks, Laura, for, for having me again. And um, for those that have joined today, I'll, I'll try and balance the presentation between uh, maybe some people that haven't heard the story and and obviously those that are potentially already shareholders of the company. So I'll try and, I'll try and keep it 50-50 so that um, we can cover all bases. But if, if I miss something, then please ask, ask a question at the end and we can address it. Um, that way. Uh, so a little bit of background um, on the company where um, we've been in the gold sector since February this year. Uh, we picked up an auction um, for the Sturek gold mine in, in Slovakia uh, towards the end of last year. Um, and we started drilling this project in July this year. So we are uh, relatively new to the gold sector um, and relatively new to this project. Uh, this has been a main drilling campaign that we started and we're, and we're in that at the moment. Uh, a little bit of background about the makeup of the company. Um, it's, uh, we haven't raised a whole heap of money since listing in, in 2017. So we've got just under 150 million shares on issue. Uh, sort of the top uh, 20 shareholders speak for around 70%. So it's quite tightly held. Uh, management speak uh, for around 30%. Um, so we are, you know, very much aligned to, to shareholders and we have a very long term view, the management have a long term view of the project. Um, we, do, we did buy a project that was advanced. Um, it, it actually came with the, with the million ounces, Laura, that you spoke of. Um, it's been held by a number of um, public companies in the past, uh, probably over the last 20 years, it's had sort of some 40 million US dollars spent on it on, on I guess, modern exploration. Uh, it has been a previous producer. It was a previous producer for the Slovakian government. Um, and prior to that, it's had, uh, I think you probably described as a lot of artisanal mining over sort of several hundred years. So it does have a long history of mining, um, particularly mining, you know, hundreds of years ago where they had to, they had to find much higher grade of gold in order to be able to, to, to follow the veins and, and to make money out of it. So it, it is actually a very high grade deposit. Uh, the million ounces that we that we sort of inherited with the project, a lot of the high grade material has, has been mined out of that. Um, so it's a million ounces of sort of 1.5 gram a ton, which is, you know, an economic um, or could be an economic open cut. Uh, but what we're trying to do with the project is, is test the boundaries of that resource and, um, and basically explore in areas where the, the high grade material hasn't been mined out and see if we can build a business case for a much higher grade, high grade mine. So we bought the project in February, um, pre-COVID. We're quite fortunate that it came with a, uh, an in-country team uh, of sort of half a dozen individuals that have been uh, involved with the project for six or seven years under its, its previous ownership. Um, so we have really hit the ground running in that sense. Uh, we've got a good team uh, in Australia, which oversees management of the exploration program, design, execution of the commercial strategy, all those sorts of things. But in country, we have uh, a couple of geos, a mining engineer and, and, uh, and staff that assist us with the program. Over on this side of the fence in Perth, we have myself and uh, Mr. Deanna, the other executive director who really sort of run day-to-day -day executive duties for the company. Uh, Quinton Hills, uh, Dr. Quinton Hills is based in Brisbane. He's a, a, a well-regarded um, structural geologist. He's, he's been essential to us in, in essentially planning our, our exploration strategy that we started in July. Um, some of you in the gold, who follow the gold sector might know uh, Mark Calderwood uh, reasonably well as, 
the former managing director of, uh, of a very successful Australian company called Perseus Mining. Mark joined us sort of three or four months ago in a, in a technical capacity to help us basically work out how we're going to make money out of this thing. So uh, Mark's been fulfilling a pretty crucial role for us for the last few months in, in refining our strategy. And the other part to it is, um, uh, is, is metallurgy. So we have Noel O'Brien who helps us on the, on the network side of things. Um, this project has some, some nuances on, on how you can process, process gold. So it's important for us to cover that base. And, and Noel was a board member and now he helps us with uh, in an advisory capacity. So the project's located in Slovakia. Um, as I said, we bought it end of last year. I, I only found out where Slovakia was towards the end of last year. Um, but as far as a jurisdiction goes, geologically speaking, there are a large number of um, epithermal and, and porphyry style uh, gold bearing deposits uh, all through that area. Um, probably most important for us, there's a mine 30 k south of us called the Rosalia mine. Uh, which is a high grade underground mine that's producing a gold concentrate and they're selling it out of the country. The reason why that's an important uh, reference project for us is they are essentially executing uh, the business strategy that we would like to adopt, which is to take our 1 million ounces of gold that we've, um, that we've inherited, bolster up uh, the, it with some high grade underground resources, and then fast track a, a low capex underground uh, mine taking advantage of the existing underground infrastructure that's already there um, and, and, and selling a gold concentrate or, or doing uh, some other processing uh, that fits within the jurisdiction legislation um, as quick as possible. So we, we have only been around since February. It's been a short, short life for us. There's been a, a few crucial milestones that we've, we've ticked off. Uh, one of those in April, we received an extension to an underground mining permit from, from the Slovakian government. That's important for us for two reasons. One, it's, uh, it's a good indication that the government's open for business and they, they'll give out permits if, um, if you meet the criteria. Uh, and secondly, uh, this underground mining permit allows us to carry out crucial uh, bulk metallurgy work that we can do on the ore that's, um, that's, uh, that we can get access to at the moment, which helps us plan um, uh, plan how we're going to, you know, process material if we if we build a, a business case for it. The second second part was we uh, audited the historic Jork resource and we took that to a, a Jork 2012 resource, um, which means that it's it's to the current audit standard um, and it's been independently verified. All those important things. This is a, uh, a brief map on the right of, of essentially the area that we've got. So it's not hundreds of kilometres of, of tenure. It's, a, it's roughly a 10, a 10 square kilometre area in red, you can see. In white, this outline here, you can see that's the existing million ounce resource that we've inherited. And a few things to note about this, this image, you can see that we are literally a kilometre away from the, the town of Kremnitsha. Prementure Bain, at the, you know, it's a couple of kilometres to the north, and then there's a little town here called Lucky. So we're very, very close to to these townships now. Historically, they have been mining towns. This this whole area was uh, was built on the back of this deposit. Um, the town of Prementure holds one of the uh, the oldest mints in Europe. Um, so so there's been significant gold mining in the area. But the previous owners, sort of the last 20 years, have all uh, been trying to get up this concept of building a large open cut mine here. Now it does sit on the other side of a hill. So technically you wouldn't be able to see it from the townships, but it is, um, it is a, a, a very close proximity to the town to be trying something like that. So we've sort of turned that uh, strategy on its head and, and we're looking to revert to to underground mining methods, which the the, uh, the townships have been very familiar with. That 1.5 million ounces, the majority of that historic gold production was taken out on an underground mining basis. Um, so we're looking to sort of do a, a much lower impact mine that we think we can get community buy-in and, um, and, and essentially have a much lower um, uh, environmental footprint, um, you know, but still building an economic gold mine. The project's got uh, sort of, 20 million tonnes of resource, that's sort of 1.5 gram a tonne. So that works for open cut, uh, but it doesn't work for underground. 
So what we need to do is work out how much of those million ounces uh, fit in the higher grade capacity that we can take out from, from an underground method. And then how much more do we need to bolster that to get a sort of critical mass. Um, the, the resource itself is um, it's quite a thick, uh, thick ore body. So we're not chasing sort of high grade veins. There's high grade shoots within sort of a, a large thick mineralization. So we're talking about sort of an 80 meter wide zone uh, in the case of the existing resource, it's 450 metres long and 200 metres deep. Those metrics are sort of important when I take you to a later slide where we talk about how we're exploring exploring this thing. Uh, the metallurgy is um, one of the things that's, that's very attractive in this area, performs very well for gravity separation and flotation, which makes sense because in order for a deposit to have been mined so significantly over hundreds of years, you need to have simple metallurgy because obviously hundreds of years ago they didn't have you know the benefits of um, lixivian technology and cyanide and these sorts of things they they really needed to rely, rely on uh, mostly gravity separation um, it's an epithermal style deposit so uh, we think it has the tendency to be large so we're not surprised uh, by the expiration results that we've got today, uh, and we won't be surprised if they continue and, and the deposit gets much larger. Uh, you'll have to forgive me on these uh, market cap, these peer comparisons. Personally, I don't hold too much stock in these, but a lot of people like to look at them. Um, these are from sort of a month and a bit ago. I actually think the company profiles have improved for some of the other, other people, but essentially we're a very, very low uh, market cap per EV ounce company. We're at the at the very beginning of our of our journey, uh, we're not an in institutional stock yet. Uh, we're not well known. Uh, we are we are really under the radar. We've only just started drilling, uh, so we haven't you know really got a lot of recognition on an EV per ounce basis yet. And and that's upside that we look forward to capitalising on. One thing I will say about the deposit uh, compared to uh, you know peers in the sector is we have inherited a very geologically advanced deposit. The existing million ounce resource is more than 75% measured and indicated. And those who understand exploration know there's a very big difference between measured and indicated and inferred resource. Uh, a lot of understanding and knowledge and de-risking goes into taking it to that stage. So uh, it's an advanced project. It's not a, it's not a, um, it's not a guess. So we bought this project and we said, all right, well, we've got this million ounces here, uh, the previous owners want to do this big open cup. We don't think that's going to fly. Um, how can we take this and uh, and uh, and turn it into something economic? And part of our due diligence, we noticed that uh, when we looked at the resource model, you can see this triangular area here where there's a depression, uh, and then you can see the reference to these sort of pinky red zones here, which are essentially grades above three gram, three grams a ton, which are, you know, you might say, all right, well, that's something that that can be done on an underground basis. You'll notice that that's all gone from this triangular area. And that makes sense because a lot of the open cut, small open cut mining that was there took out a lot of that high grade material, but they couldn't get deeper than that. So you'll start to see that high grade material start to pop up and be left behind. And then we noticed that the high grade sort of zone plunges in this Southern direction. Um, and it's, it appears open at depth from the from the historic, historic drilling. So the previous, uh, explorers, they essentially drilled within their resource envelope, but they didn't bother to extend, uh, which makes sense because they, they thought they had a million ounces that they could economically build in an open cut, so why go any further? We're obviously looking at it in a different way. But one of the drill holes that they that they drilled that they didn't follow up on was this um, this store 3.11, which had a hundred and circa 40 metre intercept at, at sort of four and a half grams a tonne gold, including, you know, 70 metres at at 6.9 grams, that's a phenomenal uh, drilling percent. So for us, we said, all right, well, this is this is a no-brainer. We're going to start stepping out from this um, from this drill hole. And so when we looked a bit further at the resource model, so if you see on the right here, this is the resource, and each section here, we're going south. So that's north. We're going south on two, further south on three, further south on four. You'll notice that the pink zone starting on the top left, which is the north. As we go down, you'll see the pink zone plunging. And then in that section four, which is the southern tip, you'll notice there's nothing there. Now there's nothing there because there's no drilling there. There's drilling there now because that's where we're drilling, but there wasn't drilling there before. So that's the that's the zone where we think we're gonna um, uh, we're gonna get out a sort of um, big 
moment. So one of the reasons we brought Mark in um, sort of three or four months ago was, all right, we've got this idea of, of, of building a case for an underground uh, mine. Tell us what we have and tell us what we need. So, so Mark did some work with, uh, with our a geologist and they worked out that within this existing million ounce resource, there's a sort of 8 million tonne zone at just over 2.2 grams for around 600,000 ounces. And if you bump the cutoff grade a little bit higher, you can take it to around 2.8 grams per tonne gold for around 470,000 ounces. So almost three grams at sort of north of 400,000 ounces. So what that means is if we want to do a 50,000 ounce a year operation now, we'd probably be able to get sort of that five to seven year magic number to get a project like that up and running now. Um, we haven't, we, we need to support that with studies, but that's that's the philosophical thesis. But if we wanted to take this to 100,000 ounces a year operation, uh, which is something that we'd like to do, what do we need to do? We need to go and find another sort of, you know, three or 400,000 ounces. And where are we going to find them? We're going to find them on that that shoot following up from 3.11. And you'll notice that there's 4,000 ounces per vertical metre in that in that core zone. So even though it's a million ounces at 1.5 grams, there's a very nice zone sort of uh, sort of 50 to 100 metres under, underground that um, looks like it could be the first few years of an, an attractive underground um, mine. So this is where we're drilling at the moment. Um, all of that colour, that's the existing resource of at various grades. And so we're looking west, and so the left is south. Um, we've actually taken a drill rig underground uh, along one of the main adits here, and then found a pad uh, as close above uh, the mineralised zone, that you know, the plunging zone that we think that we're targeting. And we're essentially fan drilling uh, out above that, that sort of zone. And we'll start a fan at a certain vertical depth and then we'll drop it again to see if we can get some depth extension. We've literally just started the second phase, which is drilling that the lower the lower um, uh, part of that zone that we think's there. Uh, we've drilled sort of 150 metres of strike extension. Um, and I'll talk about the results in a second, but we've essentially, uh, it's taken us about four or five holes to get a handle on it, first two holes. Um, whilst they were mineralised, they didn't hit the core zone, so they essentially missed. Got it in the third hole, came up really nicely in the fourth hole, and now we're confident that sort of each hole from this point on is, is going to be um, much, much easier. Uh, so this is, a, this is a hole that we released yesterday. Um, people can only trade on it today, we actually couldn't trade yesterday. Uh, but you'll see we hit 90 metres at 3.88 grams a tonne gold and, and 13.9 grams a tonne silver. That includes six metres at sort of 33 grams a tonne. And then there was a metre interval at uh, uh, 89 grams a tonne, something like that. So this is the zone that we think uh, is a follow up to that 3.11 where they hit, you know, 80 odd metres at, at six, six to seven grams a tonne. Now this is, I think this is roughly 130 metres away from that area. Uh, and combined with hole five, which we hope assays will come out shortly, that'll represent about 150 metres of sort of strike extension, remembering that the, ex the original million ounce resource was over a 450 strike. So we're actually starting to step out quite significantly. Uh, and, and obviously uh, it's still open. So after we start drilling down, we'll look forward to stepping out again, but you can, you can quickly see how if we keep getting this exploration success that the resource is going to grow quite dramatically and it's going to grow in a, in a high grade underground setting with, you know, with good grades as opposed to this sort of uh, one and a half grams a tonne historic resource, which has had most of the, the eyes picked out of it. Um, we did know we were going to get a good uh, result from this drill hole because uh, we're hitting visible gold in the holes. So the fourth hole hit visible gold, the fifth hole hit visible gold, uh, I won't say whether the six hole hit visible gold, but um, we're cutting those at the moment and, uh, and those assays should be out shortly. But the visible gold is an indication that we're hitting these sort of high grade veins that, you know, the historic miners uh, used to target. They, you know, out of that 1.5 million historic production, it's these kinds of veins that they were targeting uh, in that area. And then we're going into an area south where they, they haven't been able to get to. Uh, so we get to look at it afresh. Uh, I did speak briefly about the metallurgy. So we, 
we have this underground, we have all this underground infrastructure which allows us to get access to um, to to all for, for bulk metallurgical testing. We do that in Australia, so we we take out material under the underground mining permit that we've got. We send it to Australia. We get it tested for uh, for recovery, including cyanide. You can't use cyanide in um, in Slovakia. Uh, it was banned sort of a decade ago. But what you can do is produce a gold concentrate. Um, process it in say Poland, for example, which is only hundred k's away using cyanide, uh, or you can use an alternative like a fire sulfate, some other lixivient uh, that you can use. So uh, that we've got a few options on the processing, but one of the things that we found out with our testing, which confirmed the historic work was that this performs very, very well under gravity separation and flotation. So what that means is you get most of the gold, you know, almost all of the gold out of those first two stages, uh, which means that when you go to develop a mine, you could potentially have a much lower cost mine because you don't need to necessarily build the infrastructure associated with lixivian uh, processing like a cyanide or something like that that you do later, or you could do it uh, at a later date out of cash flows, et cetera. It just gives them some optionality to your CapEx profile. As far as the exploration upside for the project goes, again, we're not, 100, we're not hundreds of square kilometres, we're a 10 square kilometre sort of section but we could spend decades drilling here. There's, um, there's no shortage of, um, of attractive targets along here. These, these zones in red, so this sits within that 10 square kilometre package. These zones in red, um, they're not prospective because they've got historic drilling. They're prospective because they have historic mining, very, very high grade historic mining. Uh, we had a section at the Volheny, um, uh, underground working that uh, I think it was 100 grams a tonne across 40 metres uh, down vein, uh, but that was a recording for, um, you know, down the tunnel that they were historically mining. So we think that the area has a tremendous potential to have a lot of gold in it. Uh, you just got to spend a lot of time drilling it. So we're not, we're not, we're not a company that needs to go, you know, to different tenements. We have uh, plenty to explore in our backyard. Um, the beauty of our exploration is it's largely step out, which means we're starting with a known and then we're slowly taking risk. We, we're, not, we're not doing much, uh, we're not doing any wildcat drilling as such. As far as catalysts on the horizon goes, um, I mean, we probably just won't stop drilling um, and that's, that's quite typical of gold companies. We're quite fortunate that the cost of drilling in Slovakia are incredibly low. Um, they're also a little bit slow, uh, which, which has been a frustration. Um, we have one rig running off a pad uh, and we can sort of drill 20 to 30 metres a day. Uh, we're doing some work at the moment to work out how we can get a second and third rig in there at some point. Once we do that, we'll be able to really start pushing the metres out. Um, but as you can see from the, from the previous uh, drill results, we, um, we have significant leverage to every hole. You know, if, if, if we're stepping out 80 metres or 100 metres and we're hitting 90 metres at, at 3.8 grams, uh, you'll take that hole any day over 10 drill holes in an area where, where, where you don't know where you are. So it's high impact drilling. It's a little bit slower than we like, but uh, it does mean that we, we don't spend a lot of money and we do get a lot of, uh, we do get a lot of bang for our buck. Uh, I won't bore you with the resource table. Uh, one thing I'll say about the resource is it's, it's reported on an open cut basis with a very small amount of underground resource. But the way you've got to think about it is within this, this you know, 1.5 gram a tonne, 20 million tonnes open cut uh, resource. There's a zone in there, and we haven't reported on it, but there will be a zone in there uh, that we can take on an underground mining um, basis. And we'll recomply that, that resource model at some stage in the future once we've bolstered up our, our underground resources and we think that it's the right time to do that, we'll do that. Uh, and this is the reference table for some of those um, peer comparisons. This is. This is old data, um, but it matches those tables. Okay, Laura, that's as quick as I can go. <laughs> Thanks, Russell. That was great. That's that's all good from us. Um, given the success of drilling so far at Sturek, with Bonanza Grades announced yesterday, how is the drill program shaping up against your expectations? Oh, uh, we. Ha I mean, we did have a very slow start. It took. It really took us three holes to get a handle for Quinton to get a handle on where he thinks the. Uh, the main shrum and vein is going, um, but we've been having a lot of fun with the with the drilling so far. So we've got hole fours come out, 
Uh, I think we announced there's a gold in hole five. Our say for that should be out shortly. We should have an update on hole six, which is complete. Our say should, should follow shortly. We've got a rhythm going now with the lab where the assays for each hole are sort of a, a week, week and a half apart. Um, and we will probably do them quite regularly rather than waiting for sort of five or six because each hole is in is a material hole that's in sort of a, a new area, et cetera. So we'll, we'll try and release those as, a, as they come out. So what you just outlined there, Russell, is that the um, plan for, for drilling um, for the next, for the current program at Sturak? Or maybe if you could put a little bit more detail around that, how much more drilling are you planning there? Sure. So we've we've essentially drilled 150 metres along strike. Um, what we're doing now is testing the depth extension um, of that drilling success. So we want to we can see that it's moved along strike that 150 metres. Now we want to start testing it uh, at depth to, to make sure that we can bulk out those tons. Now we're targeting that on whilst we don't know we're going to get any third resource. We're trying to plan that. Uh, that sort of down dip drilling on the basis that it might be able to get us an inferred resource. And then once we are comfortable with that, we will then start to test strike again. Uh, one thing to remember though is, uh, and we and we sort of joke about this, one of the holes that we did was significantly further along strike than we really should have done. Uh, you really shouldn't, you know, sort of try and chase 150 metres off the bat, um, but it was successful. So it was, it was a bit of luck. So. We're confident that our step out should be uh, should be manageable, um, and we, we don't expect too many surprises yet. And when do you expect to announce a resource upgrade? So, I mean, we 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 already have within that million ounces, we already have that sort of section of underground uh, material that we know will eventually go into, or we think will eventually go into a resource. So it's really just about finding the additional material from say this 150 metres extension or a, little, or a little bit further, and then we'll come out with a with an upgraded resource. In addition to the resource, we'll come out with a scoping study, which will very clearly map out what that resource means for us. So for example, if I said that there's a half a million ounces that, that you might be capable of, of looking at on an underground basis now, if we bump that up, what would that look like on a production um, what could that look like on a, on a theoretical production basis? It could be 50,000, 70,000, 90,000, 100,000, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Russell. That was great. No worries, thank you.